Welcome to Thoughts in the Market. I'm Mike Wilson, Chief Investment Officer and Chief U.S. Equity Strategist for Morgan Stanley. Along with my colleagues bringing you a variety of perspectives, I'll be talking about the latest trends in the financial marketplace. It's Monday, June 5th at 11 a.m. in New York. So let's get after it. For the past several years, our overarching view on markets has been driven by our hotter but shorter cycle regime framework. More specifically, we wrote a report over two years ago that argued this cycle will run hotter but shorter than what we've experienced over the past 50 years. We base this thesis in part on our comparison to the post-World War II time period, which looks quite similar to today in many respects. First and foremost, the excess savings buildup during World War II and the COVID lockdowns were released into the economy at a time when supply was constrained. The punchline is that both the fundamentals and asset prices returned to prior cycle highs at a historically fast pace. This boom in inflation and earnings in 2021 then led to the Fed tightening policy at the fastest pace in 40 years, a policy reaction that proved to be surprising to many investors. Now we suspect many will be surprised again by the depth of the earnings decline in 2023, as well as the subsequent rebound in 2024 and 25. In a major deviation from the past 30 years, we think stocks are now positively correlated to the rate of change on inflation. We also believe this new inflationary cycle is better for stocks and bonds, at least over the secular time horizon of 7 to 10 years. However, it will be volatile, with significant cyclical ups and downs that should be traded if one wants to fully capture the excess returns in this new regime. In short, the boom-bust period that began in 2020 is currently in the bust part of the earnings cycle, a dynamic that has yet to be priced during the bear market that began 18 months ago. There are two key assumptions we think are now being made by many investors that may be erroneous. First, the worst of the interest rate hikes are now behind us. And second, technology stocks already experienced the worst of the earnings recession last year and can now look forward to accelerating growth in the second half of 2023. In fact, that reacceleration in earnings growth is now built into consensus expectations. Suffice it to say, we respectfully disagree with that conclusion. More importantly, this is a big change from the beginning of the year when our earnings outlook was not on a consensus. We think this has to do with companies sounding more optimistic about the second half, combined with the newfound excitement around artificial intelligence, or AI, and what that means for both growth and productivity. While there will undoubtedly be individual stocks that deliver accelerating growth from spending on AI this year, we do not think it will be enough to change the trajectory of the overall cyclical earnings trend in a meaningful way. Instead, it may pressure margins further as companies decide to invest in AI despite decelerating growth in the near term. Finally, given our very late cycle view for earnings, we think the time is now for a proper reset on valuation that better reflects these growth risks. The catalyst for that reset may be the passage of the debt ceiling last week, which will likely bring sizable Treasury issuance to refill the Treasury's coffers and pay its bills. In an ironic twist, the positive development in passing the debt ceiling may turn out to be not so good for liquidity and markets, much like the regional bank failures in March led to increased liquidity, which may have kept markets more buoyant than they would have been otherwise. Invest accordingly. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy Thoughts on the Market, please take a moment to rate and review us on the Apple Podcast app. It helps more people to find the show. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you. 